farms in the sky, groundbreaking approaches, and making sure there's enough food for a growing population. As urbanization accelerates, farming methods are at the intersection of technology and agriculture, nurturing a more food-secure future. Welcome to The Exchange from our studio here in Doha. Coming up on this episode, we sit down with His Excellency Fahad al Executive Director of Qatar's Caravan Earth Foundation, to talk about the challenges of food security for small states. And later on the show, we speak to Daniel Khashab, CEO of the startup Choco, who's created a tech platform to combat food waste. The quest to feed 8.2 billion people without depleting the planet's resources has never been more important. The UN aims to end food insecurity and malnutrition by 2030. Last year, over 295 million people faced acute food insecurity, a 5% increase from the previous year, driven by conflict and climate challenges. In densely populated countries, urban farming offers a vital solution for food production. Around $40 billion is needed annually to boost sustainable farming, utilizing methods such as hydroponics, aquaponics, vertical farming and community gardens to maximize limited space for fresh produce. Another key step to ensuring we have enough food for everyone is to reduce wasting what we already have. The UN estimates that 14% of the world's food, valued at $400 billion, is lost annually due to waste and unharvested crops. Despite its arid climate and water scarcity, Qatar has made significant strides in improving its agricultural practices as part of the government's commitment to food security and its Vision 2030 goals. I spoke with Fahad al Executive Director of Caravan Earth, a foundation focused on sustainable agriculture. He pointed out that low-tech solutions can often be more effective in achieving desired outcomes. Some nations have been cultivating in traditional methods and regenerative ways for thousands of years and still going on. I mean, why would we need to disrupt that? I think we should uh, be more cautious about certain technologies that are presented to us. Uh, and that's why I focus on uh, what we call low-tech, because it's the most sustainable and regenerative form. And it can be exported to countries with lower income, with very little barriers. I think uh, a lot of the hunger that we face is that we have bad distribution. So we need to empower those communities to cultivate their own land uh, using regenerative methods. So that gives them uh, micro-resilience. That's His Excellency Fahad al with important insights to Qatar's self-sufficiency goals. Another small state, the island nation of Singapore, aims to grow 30% of its own food in the next five years. But with a shortage of land, the city-state has had to look for alternative methods. And as our reporter Patrick Fogg finds out, one particular method has blossomed. Hi Leila, take a look at this. 8,000 square metres of stacked layers aiming to produce 500 tonnes of greens to feed Southeast Asia's commercial capital of Singapore. Among the variety of vegetables here, basil, parsley and all sorts of baby leaves. It's been operated by Dutch agritech company Growy since 2023. Like several others that have ventured into vertical farming in Singapore, the previous operator folded because it wasn't commercially viable. Yusnida Yunos is Growy's Singapore country manager and says it's learned from others' mistakes. Some farms struggle with high energy costs, with inefficient designs and low automation. And this is why they're just not able to compete in the market. To overcome these challenges, Growy is bringing Dutch agricultural expertise. Growy uses a centralized management software system, which means the entire place is run by scientists in Amsterdam. As well as the Singaporean knowledge and research, we're able to create new ways of farming that is both better for the people and planet. Besides that, deploying technology that cuts down energy costs. One of the things Growy does is it uses acclimatized climate cells to create microclimates for different plant zones, giving it humidity and temperature precision to reduce energy needs and maximize crop yield. 
Right now, Singapore only produces about 3% of its own food. But the COVID pandemic, supply chain disruptions and soaring inflation have highlighted the need for it to be more self-sufficient. Growy seems bullish business will sprout. Already, it's planning a second farm in Singapore to grow strawberries, mushrooms and more. One of the biggest conundrums is that the more we produce, the more we waste. But is it realistic to make, buy or consume only what we need? I spoke to Daniel Khashab, co-founder and CEO of Choco, a startup which uses data-driven solutions to streamline wholesale orders to reduce food waste. The food supply chain is a very long chain that starts somewhere with the farmer and at ends usually in a very different country with the consumer. Food distribution should use AI to understand in real time how much they are selling, where they are buying from, and to use algorithms that can actually predict demand patterns. So Choco's vision is to enable a sustainable food system. And that means a system on which every single player is connected, a system that makes sure that we have sufficient food at all the places where we need it, but that we don't grow more than what we sufficiently need. Now it's time for our regular feature, Business in 60 Seconds. Start the clock. Hisense is gearing up to announce its Q2 2025 earnings, showcasing its commitment to sustainability and innovation in manufacturing. The Chinese firm has expanded its global operations and prioritized R&D and eco-friendly practices to strengthen its leadership in the electronics market. BYD is preparing to announce its Q4 2025 financial results as it sets its sights on selling half of its vehicles outside China by 2030. This ambitious strategy is driven by a rapid expansion into European and Latin American markets. The auto giant has recently quadrupled its sales in Europe, showcasing its commitment to growth. And Manchester United is gearing up to unveil its Q4 2025 financial results as the club approves a landmark $2.7 billion stadium project. Plans are in place to construct a state-of-the-art 100,000 capacity venue to replace the historic Old Trafford. From self-sufficient ecosystems and urban farming to tapping on technology to reduce food waste, we've seen that everyone in the food chain has a role to play to help reach the goal of eradicating world hunger. Well, that's all the time we have for on this edition of the show. Please do check out Euronews.com for all your latest business news. And thanks for watching The Exchange.